Hi everyone, TJ from Avid here, and welcome back to Pro Tools Fast Start. In our last video, we arranged our song, so now we have verses, choruses, intros, outros. Let's hear what we have coming out of our first verse into our chorus. Okay, that's sounding really good. I like what we have so far, but today we're gonna move into a very exciting part of any production, and that is tracking vocals. We are extremely fortunate to have an amazing guest vocalist with us here today. Gayatri, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. All of her social info can be found in the description below this video, so make sure that you check that out. She is amazing. What do you think? Should we get started? Let's do it. Okay, let's record some vocals. When we recorded guitar, we used something called an audio interface. And we're gonna use our audio interface again today, but we need to take some special steps in order to set it up to receive signal from our microphone. When I recorded guitar, I used something called a quarter inch cable, but today I'm gonna to use an XLR cable. If you're using a microphone and plugging into your interface, chances are you're gonna be using the same thing. Now, first what we have to do is we have to take our XLR cable and plug it right here into our audio interface and then plug the other end into our microphone. Now there are many different kinds of microphones. I'm not gonna spend too much time getting into the differences, but there is one particular difference that you should know about two particular kinds of microphones. Those are dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. Now, typically dynamic microphones do not require any sort of external power to operate, whereas condenser microphones require something called phantom power or 48 volts. I am using a condenser today, so I wanna come over here to my audio interface and press this button right here to power my microphone. When we tracked guitar in our third video, I was just listening to what I was playing through my speakers on my desk. But when we're using a microphone, we want to use headphones. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my headphones on right now. Now we're gonna need a track in Pro Tools to record our vocals on, so let's do that right now. We go up here to track, we click on new, and we wanna create one mono audio track. We click create and Pro Tools has created a new track for us. And the next step is we wanna make sure that the input on our IO matches the input on our audio interface. So we click this drop down right here, make sure that input one is selected as that's the input that my microphone is going into. Now I'm gonna record enable this track and the next step is that we're going to find a nice level for the gain on our interface. Just like with guitar, we wanna start with that gain knob all the way down and as our vocalist is speaking, we wanna turn it up slowly until we get that nice healthy level. We don't wanna to touch the yellow or the red. We don't wanna get anywhere close to peaking. We just want green. So let's do that right now. Let's set our level. I'm gonna have our vocalist talk into her microphone just counting to 10. Ready? Check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now our vocalist can hear herself back through her headphones, and it's totally fine to start recording like that, but sometimes it's not the most inspiring thing in the world to be monitoring your raw vocal track with no effects on it. Just like with our guitar track, when we put an amp simulator plugin on, we can put effects on our vocal track so that we can hear them in real time and help get us inspired. Things like reverb or delay, things that make our vocals sound big and nice and luscious. So let's put some reverb up right now. Now I could add a reverb plugin right here to our first insert, but if we have multiple vocal tracks and we have multiple reverb plugins, it's gonna be really hard on our CPU. That's where I can utilize something called busing. If you see this column over here that says sends, I can click and pull up a bus that will send our signal to our reverb send that's already ready for us in this template. And as you'll hear, when I turn up the fader and our vocalist starts talking into the microphone, you'll hear that that reverb from the reverb send is introduced into our track and it gives us that nice luscious sound that we're looking for. So I'm gonna have our vocalist go ahead and count to 10 one more time. Sounds good. 
Check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That might be a bit much, but it's nice to track with a lot of reverb. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is a really important part of recording vocals and any audio, and that's called latency. If you're not familiar with latency, essentially what that means is when your computer is processing your vocal through all of these effects, sometimes you'll start to hear a little bit of a delay. And I'm not talking about the cool delay effect that comes from a guitar pedal. I'm talking about you saying something in the microphone and it coming back to you in your speakers or headphones a second later or a fraction of a second later, which can be really distracting when you're trying to record. Now, there's a way to set up your latency in Pro Tools so that it's optimized for your system. I'm going to close out of this reverb send and I'm going to go up here to setup and I'm going to click playback engine. And in playback engine, we see this option for hardware buffer size. If I click this drop down menu, we see a variety of values here. And essentially, what you need to know is the higher your hardware buffer size, the more latency you're going to get, but the easier time your CPU is going to have processing all of that. And the lower hardware buffer size that you choose, the less latency you're going to get, but your CPU is going to have a really hard time processing, and you might even get some pops and clicks in your recording due to overloading. I'm going to choose 256 samples, which is a good amount for me. It's not too bad on the latency, but it's also really nice and easy for my CPU. So we've set our latency, we have some effects on our vocal track, and the last thing that I'm going to do before recording is I'm going to double click here on Audio 1 to rename our track. I'm going to call this Vocals. I press OK, and now we're ready to record. So as always, I'm going to click this Record button here. It's going to start flashing, and when I press Spacebar, Pro Tools is going to count us in, and then our vocalists can start singing over the track. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. Okay, awesome. There is our recorded vocal. What do you think? I liked it. I would love to do that last part again. The, uh, I'm thinking maybe I could, that part. Okay. That's a great use case. So let's say that we want to retract the very end of our chorus, but we don't want to touch everything we did up front because we still really like that part. What we can do is we can use something called pre-roll to set us up to punch in at the very end of our chorus. So I'm going to zoom in here and let's find the part that we want to retrack. I'm thinking maybe I could. Mm -hmm. So if I just started recording from right here, it's going to be pretty jarring for our vocalist who doesn't have any context on where we're coming in. And that's where pre-roll comes in. I can turn on pre-roll by clicking this button right here and pre-roll lights up green. And now we have access to this little yellow flag. I can click and drag this flag and essentially playback is going to start from wherever my flag is, but Pro Tools will not start recording until it hits this cursor. That way our vocalists can still have context. They could even sing over the top of what they were doing and be ready when the part comes in that they want to re-record. So now that our pre-roll is set, the last thing we want to do is right click here on our play icon and make sure dynamic transport is off. We were using that in our first video, but we want it to be off if we're using pre-roll. Our pre-roll is set and we're ready to punch in for the last part of the chorus. You good? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Click record, that'll start flashing. Now we press spacebar. Don't know if I can express myself the way I want I'm thinking maybe I could. Awesome, and now we have a seamless vocal take. We were able to redo that second part without throwing anybody off, and we're ready to move on.
Now, in between now and our next video, we're gonna go ahead and finish our vocal recording so that we can talk about the next concept, which is mixing. Mixing is a very exciting and very deep part of the recording process. So we look forward to seeing you there. As always, thank you so much for joining us.